Today I want to talk about intermittent fasting patterns or protocols for different body situations. All right, let's start at the top, growth hormone. Growth hormone is the anti-aging hormone. It helps burn fat. It helps preserve muscle. And when you're doing fasting, it starts to increase at 12 hours. Now, if you continue to do fasting, it's going to keep going up and plateau right around 24 hours. But fasting can really spike growth hormone in a big way. Exercise will also increase growth hormone and sleeping will increase growth hormone. So when you talk about growth hormone, most people think anti-aging. So fasting has a great influence to increase growth hormone, but it starts at 12 hours and if you continue to fast, it'll increase from there. Number two, autophagy. Autophagy is a condition where your body is recycling damaged proteins and it's clearing out microbes, pathogens. So look at it like a garbage disposal. The body is getting rid of non-functional proteins that it doesn't need and it's becoming very efficient and optimizing things and turning all the damaged protein into new amino acids. And the spike with autophagy starts around 18 hours of fasting. So that still gives you like a six hour eating window, which is pretty easy to do for most people. So it's going to recycle damaged protein. Okay. It's going to kill microbes. So it's going to make you look younger. It's going to help break down something called amyloid placking, which is in the brain. It's another tissue. Patients who have Alzheimer's usually have amyloid placking. So it disrupts the communication between neurons. Also in the liver, it can help break down unwanted protein as in cirrhosis or fibrosis. So it's going to help break that down to some degree. And also autophagy will help get rid of AGEs, advanced glycation end products. This is a result of combining protein with sugar. The proteins become sticky. They're no longer functional and there's no benefit to them. They create all sorts of health problems. And the other cool thing about autophagy is it will kill and clean up pathogens and even viruses. So people that have chronic fatigue syndrome, a lot of times have a hidden chronic infection in the background. So when they get an autophagy and you clean up the microbes, all of a sudden their energy starts going higher and higher. And they're not sure why, but it's dealing with this hidden infection. And of course, if you do this longer, you'll have more autophagy. All right, number three, inflammation. You can really see a drop in inflammation when you do OMAD, one meal a day. So you're fasting for 23 hours and you're eating for one hour per day. So when you're doing OMAD, you're really knocking down that oxidative stress, which is corroding and corrupting all the tissues. Also, you're improving uh, inflammation arthritis, the inflammation in autoimmune conditions, and gut inflammation. And this also applies if you get sick with some lung issue or the flu. If you do OMAD, it, you can really speed up the recovery process. Number four, cancer. Now with cancer, I would recommend doing OMAD one meal a day. That's 23 hours of fasting with periodic prolonged fasting. Now why? Because cancer lives on two things, glucose, okay? But if you're on a ketogenic diet, and you fast, you're going to starve off cancer that way. But also cancer lives on glutamine, which is an amino acid. So the more that you fast, the more you can reduce glutamine. The problem with glutamine is it's in pretty much all the foods that you eat. So it's very difficult to avoid it. And a lot of times people are caught between a rock and a hard place because they want to avoid that amino acid, but they also want to avoid the breakdown of muscle protein. So one strategy that some people do is they take certain combinations of all the essential amino acids as a supplement uh, while they're fasting to get all the amino acids except glutamine. So the combination of routine OMAD, one meal a day, with maybe weekly prolonged fast for 48, maybe even 72 hours, and on top of that, consuming a good amount of cruciferous vegetables when you're eating is going to be very, very smart to start building up your immune system and decreasing something called angiogenesis. So tumors, for example, need a blood flow. When you consume cruciferous, it can help to limit the amount of blood supply to tumors. All right, number five, stem cell. What's a stem cell? A stem cell is an undifferentiated cell, so it hasn't turned into anything yet. 
So when you fast for 72 hours, and of course you're gonna do this periodically, you're gonna majorly stimulate stem cells which can really build new tissue. So wherever your body needs to grow new tissue, whether it's in the colon, in the immune system, in the brain, you can actually increase the stem cells by fasting a bit longer than you would normally fast. There's a certain protein in the body called PKA, and when you fast, you decrease this protein, and that will activate the stem cells. Next thing is stubborn weight. So most people fast to lose weight um, or religious reasons, and some people do it for health reasons, but if you have a stubborn weight situation, like really stubborn, I would recommend doing OMAD, one meal a day, every other day. So you're eating every 48 hours. Make sure you're getting your nutrients. But this is necessary for some people to really tap into the fat, especially if they had a history of diabetes. But the key is making sure you have the right nutrients because you're fasting for a good period of time. So definitely enhance your diet with nutrients and make sure that when you eat, it's really nutrient dense foods. Okay, last thing, diabetes. With diabetes, you can really help the blood sugar situation with fasting because diabetes is a problem with excess sugar. And so if we avoid carbohydrates, we're gonna bring it down. Now the problem with doing it as a diabetic is that you must check your blood sugars routinely and get with your doctor to adjust the medications because if you lower the blood sugar and you take the same amount of medication, you're gonna end up with a severe low blood sugar because you're taking medication when you really don't need it. So when the blood sugars start going on the low side, you shouldn't be taking insulin or even other diabetes medication because all it's going to do, it's, it's going to drive it down even lower. You can even end up with uh, some pretty serious problems. So check with your doctor, do it gradually, and really focus on these blood sugars because it's going to come down pretty significantly and you want to make some adjustments. All right, guys, last thing I want to mention is that there's not a lot of data and not a lot of studies yet. This is still a work in progress. What I'm talking about is just my opinion based on working with people. So because there's so many variables, you're gonna have to test the waters and try different things and see what works for you. And lastly, click the button on this video to watch this very interesting video on autophagy. I think you'll really enjoy it.